In this video, we are going to talk about models for population growth. Um, so population growth, we probably have seen a couple of it uh, when you were taking maybe a pre-calculus course. And maybe you might have seen this, this particular formula, P of T is equal to uh, P0 e to the KT. Okay, so, or maybe you might have seen P of T is equal to A e to the KT, or maybe, um, uh, whoops, um, P of T, let me write it right here, P of T is equal to P E R T, so PERT. So these are some uh, equations that we've taken for consideration in pre-calculus that these are all true, and they can model exponential growth. So um, the question here is why? Why do these uh, particular formulas work? So what I'm going to try to do is try to derive a little bit using differential equations, uh, try to figure out what exactly these, uh, where are these formulas coming from. So uh, one of the things that we're going to try to assume first, we're going to assume uh, that population okay, grows at a rate proportional to the size of the population, okay? So this is what we're going to assume here, okay? And here um, we are going to also have ideal conditions such as we have unlimited environment, we have adequate nutrition, maybe we don't have any predators, uh, maybe there's some immunity of diseases. So um, so we're just going to assume that it's growing. Obviously, if you have some sort of predators, or that's going to affect our population. But that's not quite what we're looking at here. We're just going to look at um, the population growth. So what I'm going to call here, um, I'm going to choose a couple letters. So we're going to say dp over dt, which is basically the change in, po in population over time. Uh, we're going to call it the rate of growth of population okay so basically the derivative if you remember derivatives are just rates so the rate at which uh, the population is growing is just going to be dp over dt okay uh, p here is going to be the number of individuals in the population so maybe this might be the number of animals that you have in the very beginning okay and then t is just going to be the time okay so what we're going to do is that when we talk about um, something that is directly proportional, okay? Usually, if you remember, uh, the way that we write it, we say dp over dt is equal to k times p. Okay, this is what it means to be directly proportional. And k here is what we call the proportionality constant. Proportionality constant, okay? So, in other words, this you can call it like the relative growth rate. Okay, so this is basically what we're assuming. Now, you might be wondering, is this really a good assumption? So assuming that the population grows at a rate proportional to the size of the population. So is that a good assumption? Well, let's take this for example. So let's say in the beginning we had maybe 1,000 bacteria. Okay, at time t. So maybe in the beginning we had 1,000 bacteria. And we know that our growth rate... Uh, dp over dt is going to be 300 bacteria per hour. So that means that in one hour, I'm going to have 300 bacteria additional. So if I had 100 bacteria within the first hour, I'm going to have 1,300, okay, and then so on and so forth. So that's what the growth rate is. So what I'm saying here when I'm trying to say that the population grows at a rate proportional to the size of the population, what that basically means is that let's say I take another bacteria, another take, another 1,000 bacteria. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're going to put it with the other bacteria. Okay, so now what we have, we have a total of 2,000. Since I upped it by 2,000, what do you think the rate is now going to be? Well, now the rate is now going to be 600. So basically what this says is that me doubling the number of bacteria is basically also going to double the rate, okay? Which is basically the assumption that I'm making, and I think it's a, a good, suitable assumption, 
okay? And obviously, if k is positive, that means it's increasing. If k is negative, that means it's decreasing. So basically, this is a really this is how I can model my differential equation, okay? So my differential equation dp over dt is equal to k times p, all right? So let's use separation of variables. So let's put all the p's together and let's put all the t's together. So I'm going to move the dt over. I'm going to multiply by dt to both sides, okay? So I'm going to have dp is equal to kp dt, and now I'm going to move the p over, okay? And what I'm going to have is 1 over p dp is equal to k dt. Now notice that there's no uh, t over here, but we do have a k in there, okay? And k is just a constant, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the integral to both sides. So what I'm going to have is the natural log of absolute value of p is equal to uh, k times t plus c, okay? Next, what I'm going to do is take the exponential to both sides. So I'm going to have the absolute value of p is equal to e to the kt plus c. I can use the properties of exponentials, and we can write it as the absolute value of p is equal to e to the kt uh, times e to the c. And I'm just going to say that this is going to be uh, just a constant. Let's just call it a. So p is equal to a e to the kt in the absolute value. Obviously, the absolute value is just going to be positive and negative, which is another constant. So we can just say that p is going to be equal to a e to the kt. Oh, so now we have this new model, which is what we had from the very beginning. Okay, so these models actually are all derived from this differential equation, which is actually pretty cool. Okay, so we've used this formula many, many different times um, in pre-calc, and we've always taken it as a given. Uh, but here, hopefully, this helps to figure out that there's actually some derivation, there's actually some calculus as to why that formula works. Okay, now this formula, we've be beaten it to death in pre-calc or maybe even in some of your calculus courses. So um, we're not really going to do a lot with, with this formula, but at least it's really good to see. What we're really going to be looking at is a logistic equation, which is what we're going to be doing in the next video.